We've talked a lot of Tennessee football during this offseason. There's a big reason why. There's a lot expected of the volunteers, a lot of volunteer fans out there posting up predictions, prognostications, and, and expectations on message boards all over the place. This fan base is ready to explode. Possibly this football team is ready to explode. We bring in Mike Laval of Last Word on Sports to break down Tennessee's schedule. And Mike, uh, you're going to look over the schedule and look at those key games that Tennessee really needs to break through on. So, so what do you have for us? Yeah, Mark, thanks for having me once again. Uh, like you said, expectations are high. Uh, they're in Knoxville. So I looked at the schedule and, and picked out the games that I thought were most important for Tennessee. Um, I really, For the criteria for this, I really looked at uh, the most important thing Tennessee has to do is make up ground in the SEC East. They have to get competitive in the SEC East. So while a lot of the fan base is focused on Oklahoma because that's the first big game, uh, really Oklahoma is not even in that first tier. So I've kind of broken the games down into four tiers. Uh, the first is, the, is those games that are critically important to forward progress and forward momentum to the program. I think the most important game this season is the Florida game. Uh, Florida's beaten us 11 straight years. Uh, it's kind of a psychology uh, issue at this point. Uh, and to get that leap for Tennessee to get into that second or first place slot in the SEC East, they've got to jump over Missouri and Florida. Uh, and I think Florida is more important from the psychology issue. So I think the Florida game is, is Tennessee's most important game. We, I think we have more talent for the first time in a couple of years. And I think we're going to come into the game as a better team. So it's going to be interesting to see how a still young Tennessee team handles the pressure of going into Gainesville uh, with that game being the most important game on the schedule. Right behind Florida, I have South Carolina at number two and Missouri at number three, and they're both uh, kind of just as important as each other. Uh, the reason South Carolina is a little bit more important is because Tennessee's beat them two years in a row. So for Tennessee to go forward, they can't lose ground against a team they've beaten two years in a row. Uh, as far as Missouri, again, for Tennessee to get into that number two or number one slot in the SEC East, they've got to jump a couple teams. Missouri is one of the teams they have to jump. Uh, Tennessee has had uh, quite a bit of bad luck against Missouri since Missouri came into the SEC East, lost a four-overtime game a couple years ago, uh, had a questionable call on an onside kick last year late in the game. So uh, so that Missouri game has a little bit of that Florida mentality from the psychological aspect, getting over that Missouri game, uh, but also uh, to move forward, they've got to get they got to get over Missouri uh, to get that number two or number one slot in the SEC East. And then number four, Arkansas, even though they're the West uh, rotational West team, uh, people see Arkansas and Tennessee kind of the same. They're both on a on an upward trajectory. Both have uh, young coaches who are who are moving the programs forward, and are both popular upset picks. So I think it's important for Tennessee to distinguish itself, particularly on the national scene with recruits and amongst the bowl watchers to beat Arkansas to kind of distinguish themselves as a team in the SEC with the most upward trajectory, uh, comparing themselves against Arkansas. So those are the four that I think are critically important to full progress uh, for the program. The good-to-haves, but not necessarily critical for Tennessee, are Georgia, Oklahoma, and Alabama. Uh, you know, if we beat Georgia and we handle three, or, or if we handle uh, three of the four critical games, we would probably take the SEC East crown. Um, 2015 is not the year Tennessee expects to compete for an SEC championship, although a lot of fans are hoping that. 2016 is really that year. So Georgia would be great to have this year, but it's not critically important to, to forward progress for the program. Oklahoma is important from a national scene. Uh, hopefully a college game day will be there, but that's the same week as Oregon, Michigan State. So that will be a, a great – September 12th is going to be a great weekend for football. And, again, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be the first big game of the year, so fans are going to be – uh, uh, out of their minds there in Knoxville. It's going to be a great atmosphere. But because it's not an SEC game, it's not a critical have-to-have game for Tennessee. And fans really need to understand that. And the last good to have would be Alabama. I don't think we're quite there ready to compete against Alabama yet. Uh, again, I think that's 2016. I think all three of these games were at 2016 would be critical for forward progress, but not for 2015. Uh, so those are the good to have games, but not necessarily critically important for forward progress. Georgia, Oklahoma, and Alabama. So that's seven games, and then we kind of get down to the must-haves. We've got to beat Kentucky, and we've got to beat Vanderbilt to maintain. When we can't slip in the SEC East, so we got to beat Kentucky. We got to beat Vanderbilt. We should beat both those teams. We're better than both of those teams. And then uh, a loss against either Bowling Green, North Texas, or Western Carolina would be disastrous. Uh, we absolutely cannot lose against one of those three teams. 
So there, there you have it, Mark. That's kind of my breakdown of the schedule. You got your critically important Ford Progress, Florida, South Carolina, Missouri, Arkansas. A good to have. You know, one, an upset against Georgia, Oklahoma, Alabama would be great, but it's not necessary for this year, 2015. And uh, you, we just can't afford a loss uh, as we're as we're still moving up in the SEC. We absolutely cannot afford a loss to Kentucky, Vanderbilt, or, or Bowling Green, North Texas, or Western Carolina. Okay, Mike. Uh, I enjoy the the breakdown there looking at the schedule and uh, I tackled it from a similar standpoint but once you sent me this this idea I looked at it and yes you can look at perception expectations and then that makes the Oklahoma game more important but if you're just looking at nuts and bolts of trying to win a conference championship and get to the conference championship game obviously the non-conference games <clears throat> don't count toward a championship. So, therefore, technically speaking, you could go 0 and 4 outside of conference and then win the division and go to the SEC championship game and win the whole thing. That's that's never happens because obviously, if you're losing to the Western Carolinas of the world, you're probably not going to beat the Georgias of the world. So, well, you put the Oklahoma didn't lose game to Indiana last side. year. Pardon me. Missouri did lose to Indiana last year. Yes, they did. Yes, they did lose that game, so that was their one loss out of conference. Then they go 7-1 and one in conference. So, yes, it's, it, you see conference champions all over the place typically lose to better teams than that, but lose a game outside of conference and then, then play much better in conference and, and take care of business. So this is how I rank them. I, I'm completely on par with the Florida game. If it was later in the season, maybe I would uh, knock it back a few notches, but uh, Florida-Tennessee is the marquee game in the SEC East traditionally. Uh, it's the first game on the schedule in conference. It's on the road. And then there's the recent history of Florida domination. So I put Florida at number one. Uh, at number two, I went all the way to the Mizzou game near the end of the season. Uh, again, for similar reasons to what you cited, I'm kind of um, putting Vandy and Kentucky in that place of they have to win those games. We're going to assume they win those games. Tennessee's gone from five wins and some lesser seasons before that where they tripped up once or twice against Kentucky and Vandy, almost maintained those long winning streaks, but tripped up, I believe, once against each of those opponents. I'm going to put them back in the category of must win, have to win. Let's take those for granted to a certain extent. Uh, so I think Mizzou's that next game because they have won the East the last couple times. Uh, South Carolina and Georgia I kind of flipped a coin here. I understand Georgia's in a place where they're supposed to win the division. They're a heavy favorite based on the media rankings last week. Uh, Georgia, at, at the same time, if both teams obviously win the same number of games in the SEC and Georgia wins the head-to-head -head and uh, Tennessee goes down, then that's going to decide the division. So I went with Georgia number three. I really think from a, from a standpoint, again, of showing... Um, who has taken over, who's, who's basically surged through and broken through as a better team on the rise. The Arkansas game's critical, but just because of the Eastern Division flavor and because of that two-game swing being in place, especially when you're playing South Carolina, Georgia, Mizzou, uh, and Florida, that uh, I put the Arkansas game on hold and I went for a top five of Georgia at number three, and then South Carolina at number four, because I'm thinking if Tennessee's really broken through, based on the trajectory of what it appears to be with these two programs, that you should beat South Carolina. And then I threw the Bama game in there as that's uh, icing on the cake, obviously, going to Tuscaloosa. But lesser teams at Tennessee, we've seen twice in the past six or seven years, go to Tuscaloosa, almost pull off an upset, probably should have pulled off the upset. So maybe this Tennessee team, especially if Alabama's struggling at quarterback and hasn't found that proven guy yet, maybe they uh, find an open window to go to Tuscaloosa and pull off the upset. So those are my top five, even though, again, as you mentioned, that Oklahoma game is going to be big. They lost in Norman last year. Uh, they lost big on the scoreboard, not necessarily on the field, but lost big on the scoreboard. And in terms of the national narrative being, is Tennessee broken through? Can we really count on them this year? That's going to be a game that people are going to look to. But the conference games mean everything, and so I don't put Oklahoma on the map from that standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with a lot of that. Of course, uh, a lot of people don't realize that with the Oklahoma game last year, there was a 14-point swing uh, midway through the fourth quarter with that pick, with a Justin Worley pick six. So really a 24-point game was, was much more like a 10-point, a maybe a 7-point game there. It was close in Norman. 
uh, once we figured out that we had to block DJ Stryker, we became a little bit more competitive. And, of course, uh, every Tennessee fan knows that it's a 15-yard penalty anytime you take your, your helmet off during the field of play, uh, which is the reason why uh, Kiffin did not pull out the upset at Alabama. Of course, Terrence Cody, after blocking the field goal, the ball was still in the air, takes his helmet off, throws it 20 yards, and uh, for some reason a, a penalty was not called, and we did not get a second kick at that. Uh, and a, lot of, a lot of people don't realize that Tennessee outscored Alabama uh, in the last three quarters of last year's game, I believe 20-7, 20-7 to 7, 20 to 7 or 21-7. to 7. Of course, Amari Cooper uh, had a career's worth of touchdowns and yards in the first quarter, uh, so, so Alabama was comfortably ahead. But once Josh Dobbs got in the game midway through the second quarter, Tennessee actually outscored Alabama and outplayed them, quite honestly, uh, for the last two and a half quarters of the game last year. So I'm not saying that, that Georgia and Alabama are, are and Oklahoma are, are outside the realm of possible. Uh, I just I think as we look at 2015, and Butch Jones is trying to to embrace expectations, but at the same time manage them as well. Uh, Georgia, Oklahoma, and Alabama are games that would be great to have, uh, really fire up the fan base, but are not critical for 2015. I think those are the critical games for 2016. Of course, uh, Oklahoma being replaced by Virginia Tech uh, for 2016. Okay, Mike, it's the typically tough SEC schedule, despite the East being perceived to be down. I think that's still relative against the West. If you look at the East compared to the rest of college football, it might be the second-best division in college football. I think it's probably third or fourth, but it's definitely right there and getting better. Uh, Tennessee draws Alabama, as always, on the other side, and a improving Arkansas team. So it is not an easy ride for the Vols this season, trying to improve from 7-6 and six upward. Mike Laval from Last Word on Sports, breaking down the Tennessee schedule for us. Always appreciate uh, the Vols' insight, Mike. Great. Thanks for having me, Mark, as always.